The Divine Companion by James Allen Part three The Divine Messages This is a Librivox recording. All Librivox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit Librivox.org. Section one Prophecies I, a sower, cast forth this seed upon the broad plains of the world, and leave it to the watchful care of the Supreme. The Divine Messages The First Prophecy, called The Awakening Sons of Light, I salute you. Children of the Morning, I greet you. Awake, arise, and rouse ye them that slumber. I proclaim to you the advent of the morning. The dawn of the new day is upon every living thing and down the holy mountain cometh the light of love, the lowly one, bringing good tidings and publishing peace. And this is the majesty of the morning, that evil shall flee from the valleys, and hardly shall darkness find a lodging place. For where light is, there is no darkness. Where good is, evil is dispersed. Where peace is, strife is destroyed. Where love is, all hatred has ceased. Where purity is, all sin is overcome, and from the abode of truth all error has fled away, and this is the joy of the morning, that evil is conquered and good is triumphant, that the glory of truth is revealed, that the path of perfection is opened up, and the bliss of a holy life is partaken of, and this is the consummation of the morning, that darkness is dispelled by light, ignorance by knowledge, illusion by reality, and error by truth. And the majesty of the morning is revealed, and the joy of the morning is comprehended, and the consummation of the morning is realized. Ye who have waited, come now and gaze your fill. Upon the heights the coming of the King is announced, even the King of peace. And they who are stricken and afflicted shall be made glad, the mourners and they that sorrow shall look up and rejoice. The chains of them that are bound shall be broken, and they shall go free. The defiled shall be cleansed and purified, and the weary and travel-stained shall be at rest. Come, ye that are thirsty, and drink. Come, ye that hunger, and be filled. For the water of immortality is found, and the bread of life is made known. Awake, ye sleepers, and shake off the dreams of illusion. Rouse ye from the stupor of mortality, and slumber no more in the realm of self. For the master of compassion is revealed, the law of good is expounded, and the great reality of a stainless life is accomplished. The truth of the ages is made plain. In the tabernacle of the holy heart it is revealed. The guileless perceive it, the righteous hear it, the holy realize it. It is manifested in all its glory in the conqueror of sin. Ye that search in the darkness, come now unto the light. Ye that see the evil and the woe without, come with me, and I will show you its source. Go ye into the secret chambers of your hearts, seek there until ye find, meditate there until ye awake. He that dreams in self is asleep in truth. The dreamer can neither know himself nor the awakened. The awakened knoweth both himself and the dreamer. He also knoweth the emptiness of the thing dreamed. The sleeper in self is involved in evil. He is encompassed with darkness. He is surrounded with woe. Such is the plight of the dreamer, and the source, continuance, and end of evil are hidden from him. Awake, therefore, ye that sleep, Awake from the sleep of lust, awake from the slumber of hatred, come out of the painful dreams of avarice, self-indulgence, vanity, and pride. Shake off the nightmare of doubt. Be drugged no more by groundless faith, by error, and the clinging unto death. End ye the sleep of self, and awake in the reality of truth. For the end of self is the beginning of truth. Behold the glorious truth. Awake, 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 ye are sleeping, 
ye are dreaming awake sons of the morning and fill the world with music come ye and dwell in the light come ye and tread the path of perfection come ye and be exalted with the exaltation of holiness so shall ye know the supreme love and peace the second prophecy called the messiah consider the signs of the times war is rampant strife is raging and the fires of passion are devastating the earth Nation is opposed to nation, creed to creed, and system to system. Science has discovered its own weakness. Philosophy has confounded philosophy, and a confusion of mental tongues has become universal. Yet, in the height of all this confusion, in the midst of the fierce clash of prejudice and passion, one has descended whose name is Love, whose mission is Peace, and whose end is Unity. Walking in the midst is he, but men know him not because of their infirmities. Yet at his touch the blind receive their sight, the deaf hear and the lame walk. Silently, holily is he working in isolated hearts. Here and there a disciple is called, and he hears and follows. And the disciple knows his master, and the master his disciple. The chosen few have not been deaf to the command, follow me and they have followed with sure and certain steps they have gazed upon the face of the serene one they have sat at the feet of the perfect one they have accepted the instruction of the holy one and peace abides with them they walk amongst men and are not discerned they have relinquished all strife in their inmost hearts hating none condemning none they have entered the gate of forgiveness Good will is the breath of their nostrils, and boundless charity is the master of their thoughts. They have ceased from vain longings, they have chased away all fluctuating desires, they have passed through the gate of sacrifice, they have clothed themselves with the garment of humility, they tread the path of good, and their gait is steadfast. Fear and doubt they have dispersed, they walk upon the turbulent waters of sorrow, and they sink not, and are comforted. They are no longer confounded by false philosophy. They have passed through the sea and the desert, and have entered the promised land. And these are they who have been born again for the salvation of the world. In the time of darkness they have accepted the light. In the time of evil they have chosen the good. In the day of self-seeking they have silenced the many voices of self, and have followed the one voice whose music harmonizes all. Therefore they rejoice not blind to the evil but because the omniscient one has shown them the end of evil yea in themselves they have already accomplished that end for they have become one with him whom they have followed all that belongs to the world they have given to the world and they have not murmured the clouds of confusion do not darken them and the fires of passion do not scorch them therefore let gladness reign for with the great darkness of these times there has also come great light though the rivers of sorrow are swollen high the banks are perfumed with the flowers of blessedness though strife is raging peace has entered into their midst though confusion has covered the earth unity has been revealed and though many continue to dream the dreams of illusion the visions of the great reality have gladdened the ken of the wakeful Awake, ye sleepers, arouse yourself, ye dreamers. When will ye open your eyes and see? The perfect one has appeared. The stainless majesty of the Holy One is revealed. His sleepless watchers have hailed him, and he has borne away their weariness. Come then, ye sorrowing, and be glad. Come, ye weary, and find peace. Come, ye toilers, and be at rest. For the longing of the ages is fulfilled, and he whom we call Master has appeared. He is the sacred inmost heart of love. The third prophecy, called the All One. To do good and to remain unknown, let this be called humility. To bless one's persecutors, let this be called love. To rejoice at the good fortune of one's enemies, 
let this be called perfection thus is the all one manifested thus is the truth made known the knowers of the all one are perfect they are without sin dwelling in truth and robed with holiness behold the all one is revealed he is made known to his worshippers the garment of evil has fallen away from them and they have put on the perfect garment of good the old bottles of error are broken and the new bottles of truth are filled with the wine of life the believers in the all one drink and are satisfied and the doers of his word enter into the joy of immortality and who are they that believe in the all one who are the doers of his word the believer and the doer is known by these sure signs he is freed from ignorance and is not enslaved by likes and dislikes he is freed from hatred and does not condemn he is freed from partiality and does not engage in strife he is freed from self-seeking and does not defend himself he never lets go of patience he does not doff the robe of purity he goes not out from the dwelling place of love the knower of the all one is perfect in knowledge he is blameless in thought word and deed the all one is sought by practice he is perceived by knowledge and he is realized by the perfection of practice and the consummation of knowledge to rise above good and evil hatred and love prejudice and error desire and pain self-love and sorrow passion and remorse life and death is to enter the unending peace of the all one is to realize the immortality of the all one is to become the all one the all one is that perfect good which is beyond both good and evil he is that perfect love which neutralizes love and hate he is that perfect life which is not broken by life and death he that would know him let him become his disciple let him remove the ever-changing opposites within until he comes to that which changes not so shall he find the eternal rock even the blessed all one the master of peace he that searches without he shall not find he that is proud of his knowledge he shall not find he that fortifies himself against others he shall not find realize o disciple thine inward error thine inward delusion thine inward ignorance thine inward delusion rooted in self and having realized leave error and cling to truth fly from ignorance to the knowledge that is pure and fortify thyself against the enemies within thyself by this way is the all one approached by none other is he accessible he that is willing to be naked to self let him come and be clothed with truth he that is willing to die to error let him come and be reborn as a child of truth he that is willing to become empty let him come and be filled with the knowledge of the all one the good that is supreme the humility that is sublime the love that transcends all sorrow to this attainment shall he surely come who seeks the all one by the path of peace the fourth prophecy called unrest the voice of the spirit to the children of the flesh this is darkness to be enslaved by sin this is light to be free from sin there is a place of darkness a dwelling place of deep darkness and they who abide there cry out of their unrest they cry and are not heard because their cry is of self they call upon their god but the silence is not broken the echo of their own voice they hear and it affrights them and they remain in their sins and remaining in their sins they shall cry we have sown wheat and have reaped straw we have ploughed but we have no produce of our labour and lo the great famine is upon us we stored away much grain but the rats have devoured it we put away much fruit but it has decayed and the long winter is before us we bartered and acquired much gold yet we perish for some the thief has stolen and the rest is mouldy what shall we purchase having no bread there is no bread and no seller of bread we die and there is none to save us 
and again in their deep bitterness they shall say we have toiled mightily but we have no reward that which we built is destroyed that which we made secure is undermined and all our wonderful works are crumbling away we ate and slept but now we are afflicted we made sacrifices yet now we are deserted we built ourselves pleasant mansions and there is no rest in them our sorrows are as the deep seas our miseries are as the great mountains our woes are many and our pains are great there is no cure for our diseases there is no relief for our sorrows we are weary and there is no rest so shall they cry and they shall not be heard so shall they suffer and shall not be relieved and they shall seek for rest and shall not find it for in the place of darkness in the dwelling place of deep darkness there is no remedy there is no redress there is no salvation where self is lord and king there is no peace ye who are in the way of impurity ye who are the subjects of self listen though ye understand not hear for the day cometh when the precepts of the prophet are remembered and his words are burned into the heart with brands of fire where there shall come upon you the night which is more than darkness the hunger which is more than famine and the deprivation which is more than death when love shall be crucified and hatred be set free when peace shall be banished and strife be glorified when righteousness shall be mocked and confusion shall flourish and the voice of the prophet is no longer heard when that time comes and ye cry and are not heard suffer and are not relieved sorrow and are not comforted remember this he that rouseth himself early seeth the sun rise he that watcheth diligently and taketh a light findeth his way out of the darkness and he that striveth with an uncomplaining heart is crowned with the crown of peace the fifth prophecy called transition the voice of the spirit to the children of sorrow arise ye awake open your eyes and see why will ye sleep the sleep that is painful come out of the night of unrest out of the dark nightmare of sin and affliction for there is a way out of the place of darkness and out of the dwelling place of deep darkness a pathway that is sure there shall be light and safety there shall be rest and healing there shall be joy and satisfaction there shall be no more dreaming for him who is awake who says with deep resolve i will abandon self and truth shall be my lord and thus resolving there shall appear upon his right hand a gateway that is dark and upon his left hand a portal pleasant to behold and he shall stoop and enter the gateway that is dark and there shall come behind him mockeries and revilings and laughter that stingeth and entering he shall take up two swords the first is called the sword of searching and the second is called the sword of dividing and with the sword of searching he shall destroy the enemies of wisdom and with the sword of dividing he shall sever good from evil he shall encounter all the enemies of light them that cast the great shadow he shall disperse and the strong keepers of the keys of hell he shall put to rout he shall pass through the fire called suffering and it shall not devour him he shall cross the dark ocean called sorrow and it shall not swallow him up and when he cometh to the great desert called desertion he shall not turn back and he shall come out of all his darkness he shall find the shadowless light upon the outermost edge of the great darkness he shall hear a voice the voice of the holy one then shall he know that the king of truth is near and that there cometh the anointed prince of peace and he shall follow the voice because it is gentle and true and it shall lead him to the eternal abode of light where every veil shall be lifted and every mystery solved and he shall perceive the majesty of the master of truth he shall behold the beauty of the law of righteousness he shall gaze upon the glory of the great reality he shall hear the song of the redeemed even this the sweet song of salvation 
sin is destroyed how perfect is the law sorrow is slain how mighty is love the clouds of affliction are dispersed how glorious is the light error is fallen how immaculate is the truth awake ye sleepers rejoice in the truth look up ye fallen and rejoice in the light let the thirsty come and drink let the hungry come and eat let the dying come and live salvation abounds and redemption is sure and entering the gate of peace the empires of this world shall be to him as dust its glories as clouds that are dispersed its pleasures as chaff that is carried away and its pursuits as houses having no foundation and the voice of the holy one shall say unto him conqueror of self slayer of sin and sorrow disperser of shadows and illusions put away the sword of searching and let the sword of dividing be sheathed here are no sorrows here is no darkness and affliction and strife and division cannot enter here lowly doer of righteousness thou hast found my law silent seeker of truth thou hast found my peace lover of meekness and good thou hast found me take up thy abode in my eternal habitation thy warfare is ended and thy rest is achieved the sixth prophecy called peace the voice of the spirit to the children of truth rejoice and be glad yea be filled with gladness for the great task is completed and there is no more labor the long journey is ended and there is no more weariness the days are numbered and the saviour has come there is peace upon the hills and in the valleys a tumult of great joy for the child who is love and wisdom is apprehended and the kingdom which is good will and peace is proclaimed sing ye holy ones ye pure and peaceful let your voices be heard truth is established and righteousness reigneth there is joy for every sorrow there is oil for every wound and there is healing for every broken heart for the weary there is a rest that endureth for the wandering an eternal refuge and for the despairing and tempest-tossed a harbour of great gladness for there is sinlessness of heart out of the dark places of self beyond the uncertain valley of transition is found the peaceful path of holiness upon the high peaks of purity upon the mountains of righteousness even upon the lofty hills of love there abideth eternal peace there awaiteth everlasting rest whosoever will climb let him come and see whosoever will strive let him come and know whosoever will overcome let him come and enter in the darkness is dispersed the power of evil is destroyed and the wheel of fate is broken the light abideth in eternal glory the power of good is supreme and righteousness and love have broken every bond death is slain for life is known doubt is no more for immortality is tasted fear is cast out for perfect love is revealed the king of truth is near and he is perfect knowledge the lord of life is at hand and he is perfect purity the saviour is here and he is perfect love therefore peace abideth yea abideth for ever these things are made known to the righteous to the wise their glory is revealed and by the guileless alone are these three perfections comprehended for he that is unholy knoweth only that which is unholy he that is holy knoweth holy things perfection cannot be distorted behold its beauty righteousness cannot be broken how faultless are its proportions truth remains undisturbed how incomparable is its calm and because of this there is great rejoicing because of this there is holy gladness because of this there is unending peace End of part three, section one, prophecies.